The challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you Husky! King, the swiftest, strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. <laughs> Trappers and prospectors, the cafe owner, gamblers, the lucky ones, storekeepers, and fur traders. These were the men who crowded the bank at Black Hawk. Two clerks, Dan Snyder and Sam Collins, were taking in dust as Jed Harrow opened his office door. Uh, Dan, Dan, will you come in here a minute, please? Did you hear that? You take care of things, Sam? Sure. I'll just get them all in one line. Go on in. Thanks. Maybe it won't keep me long. Yes, Mr. Harrow? Uh, come on in. Close the door. Yes, sit down. Yeah. Dan, we got bad news. I just got a letter from Iverson. Iverson? Yes. He's coming in to check the books. That is bad. We've got to do something to cover what's gone, Dan. Do it fast. You uh, got any idea what it comes to? About $15,000. It's a lot of money. It sure didn't last long with our look at cards. I thought we'd be able to double it that in no time. Yeah, we doubled all right. But the wrong way. I was talking to two fellas who will be here this afternoon. Yeah? What do they do? Up to now, they've got pretty good records for robbing banks. Robbing banks? That's the only way to cover what we're short. They'll be here this afternoon, eh? That's right. I wanted you to know. When Iverson gets here, you can play dumb, see? Yeah, sure. He certainly wouldn't like knowing his regional manager dipped his fingers into the bank's... You're in this just as much as I am. So shut up and listen to me. I want you out in front with Sam. He won't suspect anything. Late that afternoon, with the threat of snow hanging heavy in the sky, the bank was deserted except for Jed Harrow, seated at his desk behind a closed office door, and the clerks, Sam and Dan. Better get that dust in the safe, Sam. Yeah, I guess so. Sure looks mighty pretty, don't it? Never could figure out why you don't go out and dig for your own instead of writing up everybody else's. Uh, I ain't the lucky kind. Well, I'll put this in the safe, then soon as you're through with them books... We can call it a day. My arm! My arm! What in the head? You can't You're come in here like... You're wrong, mister. We are in. Put up your hand. Wait a minute, Lance. He's got some gold there. Hand it over. Oh, no, you don't. I... You better do as he says, Sam. They but, shot Harrow. But I ain't... All right. Now keep your hands up. Now open that safe. I said open it. And you keep your hands up. They're up. You'll never get away with this. Your only worry is to turn that combination. You better do it fast. I'll watch him, Lance. You get the gold. Yeah. This is terrible. Masked men, guns, my bank robbed. Yes, yeah, some haul. Come on, hurry. There, I got it all. You got what was in that drawer, didn't you? Yeah. Anyone that steps through that door for the next five minutes stops a bullet, see? Open the door, Pete. Remember, stay where you are. Mr. Harrow, you're hurt. Oh, it's nothing. Just my arm. Well, I'll fix it for you, sir. Yes, Sam, the door to my office. Go out that way and bring help. Yes, sir. You'll be safe. I won't be able to see you. Here's the kit, sir. Darn fool. Did they get everything? They swept the place clean. Good. Are you really hurt? Me? <laughs> no. But you better get my arm wrapped up before he gets back with help. 
Meanwhile, once outside, Sam Collins raced through the streets, spreading the news. The bank! Y- yeah, the bank. the bank! I had my dust in there! So did everybody else! The bank spilled off! Hey, the bank spilled off! Hey, the bank spilled off! Hey, the bank Empty before, except for the two clerks and Jed Harrow, the bank now was the focal point of attention as a crowd gathered into the small building. Men who'd lost their savings in the robbery. Others who didn't have dust there, but had friends who did. All of them were there. Jed Harrow, his arm in a sling, was trying to quiet the excited crowd as Sergeant Preston elbowed his way into the room. Hell, men, men! That's how it happened. Sam here can tell you we didn't have a chance. What do you aim to do about it? Well, try to get it back. If we can. What do you mean, if you can? I lost $12,000 to them varmints. By golly, I'll follow them. You do, and you're setting yourself up a sizable job. Sizable job, why, I Take a look outside. He's right, Len. With the snow coming down, their tracks will be covered before you even get to your sled. Sergeant Preston. Well, well, I didn't know you were in town. I just got in. What do these men look like? We couldn't tell. You couldn't tell. They were wearing masks over their handkerchiefs over their faces. That's right, Sergeant. We couldn't get a good look at them at all. Only I heard one of them calling the other Lance. They were in and out in about five minutes, Sergeant. There was no one else in the bank? No. Broke in through the door to my office. Door to your office? Yes. When I tried to stop them, one of them took a shot at me. Yes, I see. Hit you in the arm. Yes. What do you mean to do, Sergeant? How could they know about that entrance, Jed? Mind if I take a look at it? Why, why, no, no. It's over this way. This is your office, huh? Yes. You see, they came in this way here. Mm-hmm. You tried to stop them? They stopped me with a bullet. But you probably won't find much evidence in here. I wouldn't say that, Jed. Sometimes find evidence in unexpected places. Late that night, Sergeant Preston met Will Iverson outside the bank as the banker looked up and down the street, shaken after his session with Jed Harrell. Will! Will Iverson! Yes? Well, Sergeant Preston, this is the first piece of good luck I've had today. How are you? Fine, fine. But I didn't know you were coming to Black Hawk. Well, I wrote Jed and told him at the end of the day and tomorrow. Hmm. Strange you didn't mention it. Uh, you... Yes, Jed told me the news. I guess there's nothing to do except pay the miners what they lost and chalk that up to a bad investment. It would have been impossible to follow them once they left the bank, Will. I know. He told me it was snowing. Poor Jed, he's all broken up about it. Did you uh, see his arm? Uh, No. No, I didn't. He's got it in a sling. Can't use it at all. You know, Sergeant, when I gave Jed this job, I was a little doubtful. Oh, I... Yes, I shouldn't say it, but he was kind of wild. Of course, that was a long time ago, and uh, I've always been able to keep a close eye on him, coming back and forth pretty often. But a thing like this, uh, what could he do? The same thing could have happened if if I had been here. I didn't know that. What? That he'd been wild. Oh, yes, but he settled down. How about stopping in the cafe with me for a minute, Sergeant? Thanks, Will. I was going in to say hello to some of the boys anyway. Fine. It's been a long time since I've been in here myself. I'm afraid you'll have a lot of questions to answer. Most of your customers are in here. Well, I'll have to answer them sooner or later anyway. Late that night, as Sergeant Preston walked down Blackhawk's only street, he heard quick footsteps behind him. In a hurry, Sergeant? Oh, hello, Sam. No, I was just thinking. I didn't see you leave the cafe. Pretty noisy in there, wasn't it? Yes, the men will keep Iverson talking for another hour, I guess. He's a fine man. Yes, yes, he is. Sam, I've been wanting to ask you a few questions. Go ahead. Do you know if Jed Harrow spends much time at the cafe? Well, now that you mention it, seems to me he does. He and Dan are together a lot. I see. They play cards a lot. In fact, they often ask me to join them in a game. <laughs> but the stakes are too high for me. Hmm. Just one more question, Sam. Mm-hmm, if I can answer it. How many shots were fired when those men broke into Harrow's office? One. Are you sure of that? I'd swear to it. And that bullet was in the floor. 
What'd you say? Uh, just thinking out loud. Who fixed Harold's arm? But Dan did, I guess. And they sent me out to fetch help. Why? It's only a hunch, but it's worth a try. Where's Jed now? Down at the bank. In his office? Yeah. Well, in that case, King and I will retrace our steps. Thanks, Sam. Thanks? What fur? I ain't done anything for him. What do you suppose it... We'll go calling on Jed, King. But I have a feeling we won't be very welcome visitors. <laughs> A single light burned in the bank in Jed Harrow's office, outlining the figures of three men, all of them gathered around the banker's desk. So that takes care of everything. You've uh, got your cuts. No need for us to ever see each other again. Still the banker, eh, boss? Without the banker, you boys never could have pulled this job. Well, that's all. Hey. I think I saw Preston looking through the window. Preston? Yes, we better get out of here. No, no, he's already seen you. If he comes in, remember, you've come to see me about a loan to work your minds. Well, well, this is a surprise, Sergeant. Yes, I imagine it is, Jed. I saw your light and thought I'd stop. Oh, but if you're busy... Busy? Oh, no, no, no. These men were just leaving. <laughs> Sorry I couldn't let you have the loan for that mine, boys. We'll stop by in a week or two. Can't work it without the cash. You're Pete LeBeau, aren't you? Yeah. I didn't know you'd gone in for mining. I ain't it. I mean, not that anyone knows. I, uh, we're keeping the claim a secret. Uh, yes, well, uh, now uh, maybe if you... Jed, how's that arm of yours? Give you much trouble? No. No, I was lucky. Just a scratch. <laughs> Dan here got the bullet out before any damage was done. So you fill in as a sawbones as well as a bank clerk, huh, Dan? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's mighty handy being able to do two or three things. Our king here can smell a bullet wound a mile away. Can't you, boy? What's he barking for? Probably just because he wants to look at your arm. Don't you, king? Dogs make me nervous, Preston. Just keep him away from me. Oh, king won't hurt you, Jed. He's just friendly. Well, he doesn't look friendly. <laughs> If he comes any closer... He's got his teeth bared. Look out, Jed. Tell him to stop. I'll stop him. I'll brain him with this chair. Your arm, Jed. I thought you couldn't use it. <laughs> Down, King. Uh, why didn't you say that before? Uh, you'd let... What's your game, Sergeant? Just this. When I saw a bullet in the floor there, I wondered why you faked that wound. Oh. Uh -huh. You hear that, boys? Sergeant here saw something we missed. Something you missed. Too bad for you, Monty. That dog of yours is good as signed your death warrant. You better put that gun away, Dan. Not before I use it. You daft. You can't kill a Mountie. Who says I can't? What do you think, boss? I think he knows too much. So that's the way it is, huh? These are the men who robbed the bank, and you led them into it. Yeah, much good it'll do you to know. You won't get away with this. <laughs> that's where you're wrong. I've gotten away with it this far. You're not stopping me now. You won't take a chance shooting him here, Dan. Out by the lake will be better. Then we. You're can... not going out to the lake or anywhere else, Harold. Get that gun, King. Watch that dog. Look out, Dad. Get it down. All right, King. Down, fella. No. I'll reach all of you. Higher. This is all a mistake. I can explain. The only mistake you made, Jed, was when you had that arm tied up. And right now, the only place you're going is jail. Yes, King. The case is closed. Challenge of the Yukon, the copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, brought to you every Saturday at this time, originated in the transcription studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. Bill Morgan speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.